Hello and welcome, I am Vortex Elkerontic and today I am going to show you how to set up OpenSUSE Aeon and Kalpa for gaming. In this video I will refer to both by the term of microOS desktop. This might sound very generic telling someone to install some basic applications on some distribution, but I assure you this is not going to be that kind of a video. I will cover a few apps which would ease up your gaming experience on Linux across all distributions, but the primary focus will be on a few special tweaks you might want to do to save you some random headaches because something does not work as it should. With that said, let's get into it. What is OpenSUSE MicroS Desktop? For those of you who don't know what MicroS Desktop actually is, I'd like to give you a short summary of the key features of this Linux distributions and what sets it apart from most others. MicroS Desktop is immutable. This means the entire operating system, excluding your user directory and some system configuration files are read-only and cannot be altered during runtime. This makes it a very stable, robust and also secure system to use. MicroS Desktop is self-maintaining. This means MicroS does updates all on its own and don't require the user to even press a button. Also, if something fails during the update, it will simply drop it and move on as if nothing ever happened and retry the update later on. Since updates are applied in a separate system snapshot, you won't be left with a broken system ever, hardware failures aside. MicroS desktop is sandboxed. This means most applications you run and every game you play are running inside a sandbox provided by Flatpak a decentralized Linux container and packaging format available for all Linux distributions. For everything which is not available as a flatpak or as some CLI tools you might require, DistroBox is what you will use. By default, DistroBox will run a slimmed down version of OpenSUSE Tumbleweed in a container, but also it does allow you to run any possible distribution you like, including but not limited to Debian, Fedora, Arch Linux, Ubuntu and many many more at a native performance. MicroOS desktop is slim. This means it only has a bare minimum on board required for its mission. In our case, it's a role as a desktop operating system and of course a gaming machine, which makes it footprint rather small and updates super fast and smaller return too. MicroOS desktop is rolling. MicroOS is based on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, the rolling release model of OpenSUSE. By this, it updates almost on a daily basis, ensuring you always have the latest and greatest of your entire software stack. The most important ones for us as PC gamers are the Linux kernel and the drivers for our hardware. Conclusion? And with all these features there are also new challenges and probably a few things you may have to do differently as you may be used to with more traditional Linux distributions. Which is exactly why I'm making this video. Basic software. Assuming you already have installed MicroOS desktop on your system, we start with the most basic software we may need. As we want to turn our system into a gaming machine, we may want to install a few things. The most obvious are Steam for our Steam library, Heroic Games Launcher for our Epic Game Store and GOG library, and Bottles as well as Lutris for everything else like Battle.net, EA App, Ubisoft Connect or simply some Linux binaries we've downloaded from the web and still want them to run inside a sandbox. This is very similar to what you would do on every other Linux distribution as well. Open up the software center, search and install the required application and you're good to go. This is either GNOME software or Discover, depending on the desktop environment you opt in during installation. Basic tweaks With the previously installed software we're almost there, but there are a few recommended tweaks to save you some troubleshooting later down the road. Recommended extensions If you run the GNOME desktop, there is an extension I recommend you to install, as most launchers rely on tray icons for some of their functionality or they just minimize to the tray which would prevent us to access them, because by default GNOME does not have such a thing like tray icons. Therefore, search your installed applications for extensions and then search for app indicator and case status notifier item support and install this extension. This will enable an icon bar in the top right of your primary display filling with icons as you start opening apps which do have tray icons. Steam devices if you run Steam for the very first time, it will inform you that a package called Steam Devices is missing. Unfortunately, we can't get this package from the software center as this package is required to be installed into our running system. Open a terminal by searching your installed applications for either terminal or a console and insert the following command. sudo transactional-update-c pkg install steam devices. You can find this command in the video description as well. This will not alter our currently running system as MicroOS Desktop is immutable as previously mentioned. Instead, this command will install the package into the next snapshot of our system so we have it there the next time we start our computer. So, in order to satisfy Steam, you need to do a reboot of your system after the installation of Steam devices has completed. 
Security Enhanced Linux MicroOS Desktop by default uses a module to secure our system which is called SE Linux, which stands for Security Enhanced Linux. It prevents suspicious applications to do, well, suspicious stuff. This however comes with a downside, it may prevent applications we want to work properly to not do so. So here are a few common tweaks you may want to perform on a default SE Linux configuration. Open up a terminal and enter sudo set sebool-p se linux user underscore exit mod 1 and sudo set sebool-p se linux user underscore exec stack 1. Otherwise se linux might prevent some legit applications to do their tasks. These commands are also listed inside the video description. NVIDIA drivers. If you run an NVIDIA GPU in your system, you will also need to insert the NVIDIA drivers manually, as there is currently no fully functional open source driver which can be shipped with microOS desktop by default. Adding the driver repository. Open up a terminal and enter sudo transactional-update-c pkg install-y open repost microos nvidia <sighs> Installing the driver. In order to install the right driver package for your NVIDIA GPU, please search your GPU on the official NVIDIA driver download page. Memorize the following shortcut based on the major driver version NVIDIA showed to you. 500 or newer G06, 400 or newer G05, 300 or newer G04. Now that you found out the correct shortcut for the required driver package, enter the following. sudo transactional-update-c pkg install-y NVIDIA dash compute G0 hmm? NVIDIA GFX G0 hmm? KMP default NVIDIA GL G0 hmm. Replace the hmm with the actual number of the shortcut we found out earlier. After the installation is completed, restart your system and you're good to go. You can find all required commands in the video description for easier access. Fix automatic updates. After you rebooted your system, we need to fix automatic updates. Unfortunately, installing the NVIDIA driver will break the auto update of MicroOS desktop because the NVIDIA driver requires to agree to a license upon updating the driver to a newer version or simply if the kernel module gets recompiled for a newer kernel release. As MicroOS is a rolling release, new kernels aren't rare. Open up a terminal and enter sudo wim slash etc slash zip slash zipper.conf. Navigate all the way down to the bottom using either the arrow keys up and down or the mouse wheel. Until you read hashtag auto agree with license equals no. Press insert ENST or einfügen einfüg on a German keyboard and remove the leading hashtag from that line. Also change the no to a yes. Then press escape and write cologne x. This changes the default behavior of the underlying package manager zipper to automatically agree to licenses, such as the NVIDIA driver license. Update Flatpak After you rebooted your system, please open up the software center and navigate to updates. Hit the refresh button and install all proposed packages. Because, as we installed the NVIDIA driver, we also need the driver package to be available for our Flatpaks applications and therefore Steam, Bottles and Heroic Games launcher. Otherwise, they won't function properly. Conclusion with all these initial tweaks in order, you should now have a smooth sailing using OpenSUSE MicroOS Desktop as your gaming machine and a daily driver for years to come. I hope you found this video helpful and that you may start liking MicroOS Desktop as much as I do. If you have any further questions, feel free to reach out and maybe we meet each other in another tutorial video. Have a great day and enjoy gaming!